Hello folks. Today we're working on the GTR project that we got. Fun thing about today is that we will be trying something that I haven't done in the past. And that little something is to make a stencil, a Nismo stencil, and spray paint the intercooler and remove the front grille of the GTR. Point of this is that the current intercooler is black, matte black. I want to paint silver and I want a Nismo logo. The N-I-S-M will be black. The O will be red like the actual Nismo logo. And I really hope that it's going to turn out great. The reason why I want to give it a shot is because I've seen a few pictures of cars that actually have that. And I love the look. If ever it does not turn out good, good thing is that I can simply just sand it a bit or put a bit of paint stripper and repaint the whole intercooler back to black the way that it actually is, but even technically even nicer than the current black. So getting some tools, I will be getting a one type of screwdriver. All we need is, I think it's a Phillips and that should be it. So I think that this guy and potentially this guy should be more than enough. We'll go see the GTR and we'll remove a few screws and then I'll show you guys the stencil that I homemade. Instead of paying 50 bucks for it, I made it myself and uh, it actually looks pretty cool. So I'll get to it. So this is what we're gonna be working on remove the front grill i will be removing this grill behind it you have the intercooler that is actually very close to the front grill as you can see it's matte black so i'll remove the whole bumper i will remove this paint the intercooler then add the stencil and uh get that done so quite straightforward let's open up the hood all you technically need is you need to remove this little bolt on each side, pull the headlight, there's a screw underneath that you need to remove. This uh, is separate from the bumper and it's attached by this little, this little guy and that little guy that you simply push in. They are clips, they're not holding with anything. And then you will have um, screws up here. You will have a few screws under all along and you will have three screws as you can see right there and once they're all removed we should be able to pull the bumper so i'll get to it and i'll show you guys once it's off as promised very simple this little guy is off tabs tab tab as you guys can see they're very easy to remove and that's all that is holding them next step phillips screws if you're looking to know what it takes to remove a front bumper from a GTR, count the bolts. This is kind of all of you need to remove the actual front uh, front bumper. Uh, it's, quite, it's quite straightforward to be honest, but uh, lots of bolts. Lucky enough, there's none of them that are hidden. All of them, you can see them. The only hidden ones are from the, uh, the, the corner lights that are underneath. So once you remove the single screw right here, in the corner light you can pop them out and remove this screw but here's the bumper front end intercoolers right here so what i'm doing right now is i'll be cleaning up like all of this crap there's a lot of like dirt and stuff so i'll go grab some degreaser i'll be cleaning it off and uh degrease probably the intercooler then i'll be masking most of it up to probably here and all of this is going to be painted silver and once it's painted silver then over it it's actually going to be painted the um black nismo and the uh red o so i'll get to some cleaning and it's slightly raining today it's not it's not great outside it's uh humid probably not the best day to paint so i'll see like i'll, I'll start by i'll start by cleaning and once it is clean and once it's ready to be painted then i'll decide if i'm going to be doing it today or if i'll be doing it tomorrow unfortunately the type of person that likes to do everything the same day can't stand waiting and waiting when i know that it's ready to go so anyways might get to maybe masking get to cleaning 
cleaning, masking, and all of that, and we'll see what that brings us. Worst case, if I need to paint tomorrow, tomorrow's supposed to be nice, supposed to be like 20, well, nice Canadian weather. Um, 21 degrees, I believe, with some sun, no rain, no humidity. So probably the best day to paint, but we'll see. So I have my heat gun and it's my best friend today. So what I'll be doing is I'll be heating up the intercooler to make sure that all of the little cracks don't have any humidity or any water on the inside. It's going to be fully dry, so I'll be able to prime it. And depending on how the primer actually sticks, then I'll decide if I'll be painting it today or if I'll be painting it tomorrow. So, yeah. Okay, so I'm taped off. Uh, sorry, compressor is on. So what I did is I grabbed some compressed air and some uh, the heater gun, and I made sure that there are no particles in the intercooler. And then what I did is I added some uh, sandable primer. What sandable primer would actually do for me is that it would show me if ever the paint does not stick in this temperature. And I'll be able to stop right away before putting all the paint on it. So a good thing is that, as you guys can see, the primer gripped really, really well on this. So I have like uh, one and a half to two coats on it and I'll, I'll let it dry for a bit. I'll put another one, I have enough for another coat on it. And then I'll see after like 15 minutes, see how the paint reacts to see if it reacts properly. If ever it does react properly, then I'll tape the rest of around the, the body and uh, start painting the, uh, the silver on it. Okay, so fuck's sake, bees are everywhere. They're always after me, this is unbelievable. So what I did is I, Add in another coat of uh, black matte sandable primer. It held really, really good in this temperature. Now it's actually, it has just a bit of breeze. It's getting warmer outside. Uh, humidity seems like it's still there. It's starting to disappear. Like it's still there because I'm close to grass and stuff. So it's not necessarily the best thing, but it's good in one sense that there is no dust in the air because it just finished raining. So technically there's pros and cons to painting in this temperature. Um, I think that I prefer this than painting in dust. So anyways, what I did is I did all of that and now I just finished the first coat of silver paint. It's quite good quality paint, paid enough money for this. So here it is. This is the first layer. It actually looks really, really good so far, to be honest. This is the first coat and what I'll be doing is I'll be adding another one in probably about 15 minutes let it sit let it dry well actually if it, if in 15 minutes it it dries properly then i'll add another one and probably add two or three since that part of the uh, inner cooler might be eating some rocks i don't want it to chip easily so probably uh three layers of paint once it has dried properly what i'll do is i'll do the uh, nismo stencil stencil on it see if it looks proper if it does look proper amazing then what i'll do is probably today i'll do one or two layers of a clear coat and i'll let it dry overnight properly and then tomorrow i'll actually add another two layers of clear coat so that if ever once again there's some rocks that hit the intercooler at the very least it's not going to affect the paint it's just going to affect the actual clear coat because there's going to be, you know, three, four layers on it. So I really hope that this is going to look good because it is 100% homemade. Like I didn't purchase anything other than paint. Well, yeah, masking tape, uh, primer and all of that crap. Some tools that I already had at home. 
but from my own perspective all that I purchased is that one can of paint because I had everything else um, all I need is my printer at home to create the actual Nismo stencil which I'll show you guys in a bit actually it's gonna look really really good can't wait it's it's, it's yeah I'm happy really happy so far that's what happens when you're too excited I forgot to film and I am a step ahead of you guys sorry well okay so talked about the stencil a bit earlier here it is NISM always hidden behind because the O is red I have measured from the end of the well from the start of the intercooler to the end of the intercooler everything is silver and now I've been I added a first layer of black once the first layer of black is there and is dry what I'll be doing is I'll be removing this and taping the NISM and adding red the red that I have is actually a very cool red it's a um, when you heat it up it actually looks like a gravel guard so it's actually gonna pop like it's gonna be really nice I think so anyways that's what I'm doing right now is I'll be probably adding like four layers of black on top of the silver that I just did once that is done I'll be doing the red O once the red O is done I'll be removing the stencil I'll be letting it dry for probably an hour before it gets too cold outside and add one or two layers depending on the temperature of a clear coat and probably finish it off tomorrow Seriously, I have no clue what's gonna happen with this, but we are at this and that and metal and pliers to have a final result of Nismo. So the reason why I have this, I need to hold the middle of the O. So as you guys can see, there's some metal rods in there holding it so that there's not too much of paint that's missing. Nismo's completely painted black. The inner cooler's painting completely silver. So letting it dry as it is right now for probably 10 minutes before I put back the, uh, the wrinkled effect uh, red paint. Um, I'm gonna actually pull out the, uh, the heat gun once again to let it dry a bit faster and to make it wrinkle a bit faster as well. You know, that's what they recommend to do. So I might as well follow the instructions for once and actually do it. So anyways, I'll pull up the, uh, the heat gun. I'll heat dry it and see what uh what we get out of this it's i think like i haven't removed the uh the stencil that i made i think it's gonna be nice i think it's gonna be pretty cool actually i think that uh compared to a um purchased stencil for like 50 bucks i think that we're gonna be quite close because you know the intercooler does have a lot of little grooves little gaps so I don't think that a professional stencil with like precise millimeter details would actually make a huge difference on this. So let me pull the uh, the heat gun and see what, uh, what wrinkle effects we can make out of this. This is for like homemade on a rainy afternoon, to be honest, with like barely nothing in the house or barely nothing. I did have a few things. I am just so stoked as the like what you can do with your remaining stuff inside the house like I, i'm sorry like i'm speechless to be honest like it might it might seem like nothing to some of you guys but to me like it looks good like i had an idea in, in mind and you know when you come up with an idea in your head and then you execute it it's never necessarily the same but this is for sure like this is what i wanted it looks like exactly what I wanted. So happy. So stencil, this is the stencil that I made homemade with basically just scissors and a knife. And the, the, the car looks like this. It's amazing. Like going from black to silver with black and red, 
Now I'll be clear coating it. Yes, it's not done and you know, like it's missing a bumper and it's missing a whole bunch of stuff. So it's not necessarily pretty because you're missing a whole bunch of crap on the car. But this is, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm speechless. Really, really happy. Like, yeah, anyways, I have no words. So I'll stop this part of the clip right now. Um, next thing is I'll be grabbing some clear coat. I'll be clear coating it like a lot just to make sure that it dries properly. I'll probably have to be checking the temps of the, uh, the, uh, the air intake just to make sure that the paint doesn't affect it. I don't think it would because there's not a lot of paint on the majority of it. It's just really the Nismo that has a few layers. So I think it's going to be a major problem, but again, We'll check it out just to make sure that we're not running into any major problems, but I'm so stoked. So I'll be adding the next layer and let me show you guys what the final result looks like with the actual bumper back on. Very stoked with the end results. The only thing that I'm not sure about is the, the front grille. So here it is. So as you guys can see, it's actually looking really, really good. I'm so happy with the way that it came out. Um, it, it is low, but it's just because of, so if you look at it this way, it does seem a bit low, but the majority of the people and the majority of the folks, whenever you're driving, it's gonna be like this. So you need a kind of position in the middle. So the majority of the examples that I looked at, that's where it's positioned. I really like it. I'm happy with where the Nismo is positioned. The only thing that I'm questioning myself is if I should put the grill back on. There's a black grill that can go over it to actually protect the intercooler. I already have all of the bolts and everything back on the car, so you know, removing the bolts and removing the bumper might take me another 15 20 minutes or something like that to do it properly, do it slowly. Um, I'm not sure, I'm not sure if I'm gonna put it back on. I give it a shot, see what the difference is. Um, I would definitely like to have the protector of the intercooler just in case, you know, I don't want to eat huge rocks. But in any case, I'm, I'm really, really happy. The, the paint, the clear coat and everything turned out to be actually amazing. It's better than I expected. I hope you guys liked the video. Hope it gives you guys some ideas on what to do with your own car. I like the results. It cost me barely any money, so that's what I'm really, really stoked about. The goal with this car was not necessarily to go super cheapo. The goal with this car was actually to keep it factory and to keep it well maintained, good parts and everything. But that's not a part. That's just a quick little add on that I would say. I wouldn't necessarily consider cheap because if ever I don't like it or if ever it doesn't necessarily work, I'll just paint black over it. Anyways, it's it's different, it's cool, like it, happy, hope, hope you guys like it. If ever you have any questions, if ever you have any questions regarding it, if you want to give it a shot yourself, let me know. I can definitely help you out. Take it for a spin probably tomorrow. Uh, and you know, until next time, uh, next project, I don't know what it's gonna be. But there's going to be something more coming on the R32 GTR. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time. Oh, and don't forget to like and subscribe. If ever you like the videos, there's a, I do have a whole bunch more videos. I do have the Honda Prelude H22 T3 T4 Turbo on it. I think it's a 53, what is it? It's probably like a 5360 something turbo on it. Uh, molly pistons forged rods and everything that i just started tuning with my buddy mark and we're making eight pounds on it as it is right now we're planning on maybe taking it to the track next weekend and tune it to 15 pounds so probably close to i would say four to five hundred wheel horse on this guy probably 500 horse to the crank so anyways more to come on that one for the ones that have seen the last video and that were expecting a track day really sorry that i didn't film anything on a track day but next weekend probably if ever we're going i guarantee i'll film some of it for you guys so once again thank you very much for watching until next time see ya